Hello. In this video, we are going to do a calculation which involves the so-called common ion effect. So we're going to look at the solubility of a sparingly soluble salt, one that we've looked at before, cuprous bromide, copper one bromide. But rather than just dissolving this compound into pure water, we are going to dissolve it in a solution, which we already know has a concentration of 0 0.01 molar sodium bromide. So we want to see how we do such a calculation. So the first thing we want to look at is the 0 0.01 Zero 0.01 molar solution of sodium bromide. A thing to keep in mind is that sodium bromide is a strong electrolyte which dissociates completely in solution. So it's going to break up completely into sodium plus ions and bromide ions. And the way that we denote the fact that it breaks up completely is that we have just a one-way arrow. So this, we notice from this that for every one molecule of sodium bromide, if you want to call it a molecule, we get exactly one sodium plus ion and one bromide ion. So that tells us that if we start with a concentration of 0 0.01 molar of sodium bromide, that the concentration of sodium ions is going to end up being 0 0.01 molar also. And since for every one sodium plus ion, we need exactly one bromide ion, we know that the concentration of bromide from this salt also has to be 0 0.01 molar. For the rest of the problem, the fact that we have this sodium counter ion involved will not be important. But just to show you that in some cases we'll be told the concentration of the entire salt. In other cases, we might just be told the concentration of the bromide ion. And here's how we figure out what that's going to be. So then we have our sparingly soluble salt, cuprous bromide, copper one bromide. And remember, since this only dissociates and dissolves to a very small extent, we write the arrows in both directions. So we get for every one of these that actually does dissolve, it's going to break up into a copper plus one ion and into a bromide ion. So when this breaks up, we get exactly one bromide ion for every copper one plus ion. But also keep in mind, this is different than previous circumstances because we have another source of bromide also. We have the bromide that was already in the solution from the sodium bromide. So one way to think about this is we'll use the letter Y for a variable. For every Y uh, molecule of cuprous bromide that breaks up, we're going to get Y copper plus ions, and we're also going to get Y bromides because we get one bromide for every copper. But we have more than that. So we want to see in the whole solution. So this is just from the copper bromide breaking up. But we also know that we have 0 0.01 molar bromide ion that comes from the pre-existing solution. So what we realize is the total, it says total here, the total bromide concentration that we're going to end up with is going to be this value Y that comes from breaking up of the Cooper's bromide plus 0 0.01 from the pre-existing sodium bromide solution. Now we could solve using this particular expression, but we're going to make an assumption and we're going to assume that this value y is very, very small compared to 0 0.01. If we make that assumption, then we can just decide the, the result of this conclusion is that the concentration of bromide is going to be exactly 0 0.01. And that's our key step in the solution. And we have to be sure that we represent this particular decision by writing out explicitly the word assume and assume uh, what we've assumed. We write that out. And at the end of the problem, we have to make sure 
that we verify that the assumption was a justified assumption. Let's write out the explicit equilibrium that's involved in the dissolution of Cooper's bromide. Let's we'll write this out one more time, but then we can write the equilibrium constant expression for it. So remember that our KSP is going to be the concentration of Cooper's ion times the concentration of bromide ion. And we also recall from our previous problem that this has the numerical value of 6.27 times 10 to the minus 9. Also recall, similarly to what we did before, we're going to let y be equal to the concentration of Cooper's plus ion. Recall from the previous step that rather than set y also equal to the bromide concentration, we're going to set the bromide concentration equal to 10 to the minus 2. So this is just our 0 0.01 written as a power of 10. This is a key step in solving common ion effect problems. Whereas we would have set the bromide concentration equal to y in pure water, when we have the common ion already existing, we set this to an explicit numerical value. And that's the key uh, technique that we need to solve. So now let's substitute these particular expressions back into the KSP expression. So the Cooper's ion concentration is now going to be the value Y. The concentration of bromide is going to be 10 to the minus 2. And we know that the KSP value is numerically 6.27 times 10 to the minus 9 power. So now we want to solve for y, and we do it by the standard techniques of dividing each side by 10 to the minus 2. And we're able to determine that y is going to be 6.27. 27 times 10 to the minus 7 molar. So not only is this the concentration of cuprous ion in the solution after we're done completely, but that's what tells us exactly what the concentration of cuprous bromide is that dissolved because we only get copper plus 1 ions from the dissolution of cuprous bromide. The step that we need to perform now is to double check that our assumption that y was very small compared to 0 0.01 was actually a good assumption. So, so we want to check our assumption. And the way that we do this typically is we do it as a percentage. And what we will do is take the value of y that we found, which is 6.27 times 10 to the minus 7. We want to divide it by the value that we compared it to, which we'll just write as 10 to the minus 2 because it makes it easier. And if we do this as a percentage, we take this ratio and we multiply it by 100%, which is also 10 to the 2%. perform this particular calculation, we see that we get an answer of 6.27 times 10 to the minus 3%. Our test is, is this particular value uh, less than 5%? There it is, 5%. And since 6.27 times 10 to the minus 3 is much smaller than 5, we see that our assumption that y was small is a valid assumption. 
The last thing that we want to do is to compare the solubility that we just determined for Cooper's bromide in a sodium bromide solution with what the solubility would have been, what we already had figured out, if we had just tried to dissolve the Cooper's bromide in pure water. So let's compare those. So this is the value that we had found for the concentration, and let's we'll remind ourselves this is in the 0.01 molar sodium bromide solution. What was the value that we found for the pure value? Well, that was 7.92 times 10 to the minus 5 molar in pure H2O. Since 6.27 times 10 to the minus 7 is much smaller value than 7.92 times 10 to the minus 5, we see that we've reduced the solubility of Cooper's bromide because of the effect of the common bromide ion. In fact, we see that if we write this as a ratio, we'll see that the solubility is about one hundredth, or about 1% of what it had been in pure water. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.